Hey, listen, do you love cold brew, but you don't like how long it takes up to 24 hours? Well, we've got the answer using this right here, the Presto Dorothy Rapid Cold Brewer. It only takes an hour or less. Find out more here on Bean Basics. Oh, hey there. Welcome to Bean Basics with Bob and Michelle. Welcome to Sunny Sagatuck, and welcome to the Obus Lab. Hey, listen, today we're talking about cold brew again. We've talked about cold brew a couple times, and we'll put those episodes up here so you can compare and contrast. But what we're talking about today is a machine that makes cold brew in one hour instead of 24 hours. And that's really a big deal. Holy moly. Holy moly, right? I mean, technology, it works, right? <laughs> or, or we'll find out if it works. We'll anyway. find out if it works, right? So uh, this is a machine made by Presto, and Presto happens to be the same maker of the, um, what do we call this? The percolator, percolator right? And I was uh, sort of shopping online, and I came across this, and it's called the Dorothy. I, I have no idea why they call it the Dorothy. Oh, I think I do. Oh. Because it makes a tornado. A tornado. Right? Wow. You're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. All right. So right? What, what movie is that? The Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. Okay. I guess everybody has to know about that in order to, to get it. But uh, somebody, somebody was dreaming there, right? <laughs> and... Uh, that's a real advantage to be able to make it in 24 hours. Uh, it's, it's really easy to do and it's easy to clean up too. So I'll show you what we have here in this Dorothy. We have a base and it looks like there's nothing there, right? It looks like there's nothing there. But there's a motor in here that turns and turns and turns and that motor is connected to, oops, that doesn't sound good, but not to worry. That motor has some magnets that then connects to this right here. And this spins, right? So uh, this almost looks like uh, a French press, right? So I'm gonna put this in the bottom and this is sort of the, the spinning component. But what this also is, is where all the grounds end up. And it's the thing that makes it really easy to clean. All right, so, um, uh, this has a seal around it and sometimes the seal, there we go, uh, it's almost not perfect. Now, you see that little rod at the bottom? Yep. Okay, now that's important. I'm going to have you come back because at the bottom of this sort of French press looking thing, right? French press, we go like this, whoop, right? To get all the grounds in the bottom, there's this little clip. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we're all done, we'll push all the grounds down and when we get to that pin, you're going to hear a little click. Ah. Right? And that's the thing that allows us then to put, now it, there's no water, so it's a little sticky, but allows us to pull the grounds right back up and out. And then, you know, just take it to the sink and rinse it out and you're all done. Okay. Cool. Now, question, you know, why, why, why can this make cold brew? in an hour rather than 24 hours. And, you know, uh, this is an immersion method, right? All cold brews are an immersion method. So is a French press, by the way. And, and I don't know why I keep talking about French press, except this kind of looks like a French press it right does. here. If you want to know how to use a French press, we'll put that episode up there also. Because uh, there's some parts to this that are related to how we deal with the French press at the, at the end of the process. But typically in a cold brew, we just pour a bunch of water in a jar. We've done that before with a mason jar. And then we pour the coffee in and we kind of give it a shake and we let that sit in the fridge for 24 hours or actually out on the counter. And then we filter it off, right? Well, the way this works is there's, a, there's agitation, right? And so adding that level of agitation uh, movement of the water on the grounds makes those soluble components dissolve faster, right? And so you save 23 hours in the deal. Now it does make for a drink that's a little bit on the cloudy side, right? So the clarity isn't there, but it's not like we have sedimentation 
right? We don't have a grittiness to the drink. It just happens to be a little cloudy. And if that doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother me, uh, you would have a very good tasting cold brew. So I've shown you all the parts, but not the plug. And the plug just goes in the back here. By the way, you know, I find the construction of this all to be uh, very solid and durable. I'm going to plug this in. And uh, they say to fill the water to the line. There's a, there's a max line right yeah, there. Yeah, you can see it. Mm -hmm. Do we know how many uh, milliliters that is? It's about 750 milliliters. I'm glad you asked. Magical. Magical. And then they say to put two-thirds uh, of uh, a cup of coffee in there. Uh-oh. I know. You know how I feel about volumetric measurements. It doesn't really work. Uh, but what it comes down to is about 45 grams of coffee. And magically, magically, that is also meeting our ratio of 6 grams of coffee per 100 grams or milliliters of water, right? So it all just works out. Make got sense? It. Yes. Yep. Okay. Now, i got to say... This thing is a little mesmerizing uh, to watch in the beginning, this, this Dorothy tornado thing, because it really does happen. It really does work. So we're going to uh, measure off 750 mils of water first. And I'm kind of doing it on the side, so hopefully I get it like... There you go. Oh, maybe just a little bit over, but it'll, it'll be okay as long as I don't go over the max line. And in that goes... Not over the max line. I'm short of the max line. You're short of the max line. But wait, we haven't added the coffee yet. Ah. Okay, so don't panic. All right, but let me let me go ahead and measure out 45 grams uh, of uh, coffee. And if I use my if I put my measuring device on the scale first, it'll tear out that uh, that tray right there. So we're at zero grams right now. We need to get this to 45. And I say that I'm able to do it in two and a half scoops. Well, I can't see the numbers from here. So. Well, that's three. I'm, I'm way off anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it just shows you why volumetric stuff doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work. work, right, exactly. You got it. So we're at 45. By the way, we haven't talked about the airscape in a long time, but it's just a great way to keep your coffee fresh because when you push down the lid, it takes all the air out and uh, keeps the coffee fresher longer. All right, uh, and we're always going to spray our coffee before we put it in the grinder, just like that. This is just water, and the re reason we do that is it reduces static electricity buildup right here on the grinder. And we're always gonna start our grinder first and then pour the grounds in. But I've done us all a favor, and I've already ground the coffee, Woo. right? I know, because otherwise, who likes to sit around and, and listen to a bunch of coffee uh, getting ground? Smells really good. I have this on about a 20 setting for the Baratza Encore, uh, which is uh, about where a Chemex grind would be. So, okay. yeah, it's, it's slightly coarser than uh, Auto Drip, uh, but it's not as coarse as French Press or anything like that. This does not need to be coarse to work. Actually, you don't want it really fine. But um, uh, you, you do want the, the water to be able to penetrate because you're only doing this for an hour, right? Okay. Now, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but I'm going to just turn this on, and there's some magic that happens, and you'll just start seeing it happen. There it goes. A little bit, and a little bit more, and a little bit more. I mean, it really creates a tornado in there. And so you can see that once I get those grounds in there, that is going to create agitation, right? And it's going to allow the soluble components of the coffee to come out faster. Oh, that's cool. That was just for a second, a right? little tornado of coffee. Totally, right? Now, if you pour it in really quick and there's a bunch sitting on the top, what I do is I, I go about halfway and then I crank it up and it'll just sort of suck the rest of it in. I don't know if you can see that. You might want to get a little top shot on there if you can. Yeah, yeah you see right. it moving around. Okay, 
So do you see what I mean about being a little bit mesmerizing? Well, right. So you, you gain 23 hours, right. but you, you lose an entire hour staring <laughs> at it. <laughs> well, hopefully um, life is more exciting that you don't end up staring at your, your Dorothy uh, uh, for 30 minutes, right? So this part here is going to be there for 30 minutes. Now, in their manual, they say, well, if you like light cold brew, do it for 10. If you like medium light, uh, do it for 20. And then if you want it to be a strong flavor, do it for 30. Uh, my advice is do it for 30, right? Uh, it, 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 is, it is necessary to do it for 30, right? And, and the, the version that comes out after 10 minutes is just it, it, not enough is dissolved, right? You know, cold brew has come into quite some popularity. And, and the one reason that it is so popular, or one of the major reasons it is so popular, is because it is a 25 to 30 percent reduction in acid, right? And so it just sits with people uh, a lot better. And of course, you can make this in advance and then put it in a jar and store it in the fridge and, and it'll be just fine, right? So uh, you could actually make this cold brew in the morning while you're making your regular coffee, like through your Mocha Master or whatever you use for uh, drip coffee, uh, and then pour it and put it in the fridge and then have it in the afternoon. That'd be great, all right? All right, uh, just to reduce the noise a little bit, I'm not going to push it down, but I am going to just put, put this on. Put a it. lid on it. Put a lid on it, right? That's how easy it is, right? There's, there's just nothing to that. So uh, this has got to go for a half an hour. For you, that's going to be a matter of seconds. But we're going to say goodbye for the moment and see you right back. Okay, we're back. And it's been about 30 minutes. And, uh, you know, th there's a lot of coffee machines that make some really weird noises to me, including our grinder that sometimes I, it just grates <laughs> on me. But, but this little thing has just, I guess, what would be described as a soft purr, right? It, it almost lulls you into that. But I got to say again that I just really love the idea that you can, you can have this in an hour or really less than an hour right and so you know when you feel like cold brew you don't have to plan 24 hours in advance your feelings for cold brew before you make it you can you can get this out and whip yourself up some cold brew in a snap like that and so that's one of the advantages uh, of this here plus it's easy to clean up it's an easy recipe to follow and so on and so forth and it's just cool watching the tornado start in the uh yeah. Like it's as mesmerizing as a lava lamp. No, right. Like, like uh, it, it's as if you'd want to just put cold water in this thing, <laughs> get the tornado going, get some food dye, you yeah, know, food you drops, yeah. the things you use to color your eggs with, and just drop it in and see what would happen with it. <laughs> you know? uh, the, the, this, this is almost uh, like a toy. But this thing is like a cross between a blender, but of course not the annoying sound of a blender, and a French press. And I don't know who thought of this in Presto, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed with it, right? So, uh, we're approaching our 30 minutes, and all we do is is dial down at this point. We just turn it off, okay? Now, at this point, there are like some French press components, right? We've got this this sieve uh, that we need to push down so that we push the grounds down into that little collector pot down here, but as we discuss in, 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 a, in a French press episode, right, it, it's the Frank Green Fresh Press episode. I think we got that up here. There's my timer. Um, uh, what we say is don't be in a hurry to press this down, right, because everything is just floating around. And if you just give it a little bit of time, it'll settle to the bottom like silt on a river. Gravity right? can be your friend. It, totally. Gravity is your friend, right? And, I mean, the longer you do it, the better. Um, so... I would say anywhere from six to 10 minutes. We're gonna wait 10 minutes before we give it the plunge. And then we're gonna make some drinks. So we're gonna go away again. But before we do, I just wanna point out yeah. that you are exactly at the max line with of, your fluid. Of course. The coffee, right? that coffee thing, it, it worked. That's You're right. at the max line. 750 milliliters and or grams of water, 45 grams of coffee. Perfect, okay. We gotta get some ice. We gotta get some cream and sugar from Michelle. Thank you. But 
It's going to take us 10 minutes because we're going to let that sift down, but we're going to be back in a second. So see you in a second. Okay, we're back. And our timer just happens to be going off, which is great. Uh, it's been about 10 minutes. All the grounds have sifted to the bottom here. Okay, so we can go ahead and unplug uh, our Presto, get that out of the way. Frankly, we can just take it right off the base. And, and at this point, it looks a little bit like a French press, except there's this little catch basin down here where all those grounds have floated down to, right? And so now we are going to give it the old French press, and you'll see that it's, it's so easy to do. There's no resistance to this. I can do it with my pinky probably tied behind my back. It is so <laughs> easy to do. But we're just going to trap, and it, it's going to be a little bit of a click here. Okay, remember how it inserted in that pin? We've now grabbed onto that pin, okay? So now at this point, we're ready to pour our drinks, right? So Ooh. we get to have cold brew. Now for cold brew to be cold, uh, and by the way, uh, let me just bring this back for a second. You want this water to be about room temperature when you start. In other words, the colder the water is that goes in here when you start your tornado, your Dorothy tornado, the longer it will take to extract it, right? So you don't want to use warm water or anything like that, but you just want it to be about room temperature. Anyway, I was going to say that in order for cold brew to be cold, uh, we're going to need some ice, and I've got ice right here. And uh, Michelle takes her coffee, of course, with uh, milk and sugar. Milk and sugar. And so I've got some sugar here. This is special sugar that we keep in the lab. Uh, I'm very fond of it. You can see the, the vanilla bean in it. It's like vanilla bean sugar. And, and the, th this is a very fine granulated uh, sugar because it dissolves easier in a, in a cold liquid. Baker sugar. Baker sugar is what we use. But I just have put a vanilla bean in here and I keep adding sugar and sugar and it keeps absorbing the vanilla flavor and so on and so forth. So I've always really uh, enjoyed that. Uh, but I'm gonna just put a scoop of that here at the bottom of uh, Michelle's glass and uh, put a little cream in in advance. Well, actually the cream I can wait on. It's the sugar uh, that, that's difficult at times to dissolve and so on. But I'm gonna fill these glasses up with ice. So, you know, 30 minutes in the vortex, uh, 10 minutes, um, uh, letting the ground sift down. So you're really only talking uh, about 40 minutes, maybe five minutes of preparation, five minutes of cleanup. That's why I say it takes about an hour, but you, know, you pick up 23 hours in the deal, right? So uh, I'm gonna pour uh, mine first. And you can see, I don't know if I talked about this, but it has a cloudy quality to it, but it's not, when you drink it, it it's not, it doesn't feel like it has sediment in it. Uh, it's just, um, it'll look a little bit cloudy. And by the way, if you have any left over, uh, you can turn that, and sometimes we do after a drink, you can see I've got about that much left over. Uh, you can just grab a mason jar or something like that and, and pour that in here. Uh, but the other thing that I do with it I'm going slow so you can see whether there is any sedimentation and that maybe just a very little bit right towards the end there and that's it. So all the grounds are captured down here. The other thing you can do with it is make ice cubes, right? So you can grab an empty ice cube tray and make ice cubes out of cold brew. And there's a drink we like to make out of that called the... Spotted cow. The spotted cow, right? And so maybe someday we'll show you how to do uh, the spotted cow. I like putting the milk in afterwards and not before just because it, visually it's always uh, yeah, it's so really pretty. appealing. And I said milk, but really this is half and half. Uh, and I'm going to give it a stir. So we're going to lose that sort of quality of, of the milk sifting down. But I got to give it a stir just so that that uh, sugar will dissolve. And, you know, uh, Michelle asked me uh, before we started this segment, are you going to tell people how you feel about cold brew? And because, you know, cold brew isn't my favorite coffee per se, but the way I've gotten around that in my head is I don't consider it coffee. I just consider it a different kind of drink, right? So if I have the expectation that it's going to taste like coffee coffee to me, like uh, iced coffee, it doesn't right? But it does taste good all on its own. Babe, I'm going to hand you a, a drink here. Why, thank you, handsome. Yep. 
and uh, have you take a sip. I'm going to take a sip. I don't take cream and sugar. I don't consider that to be... Yeah. That um, is yummy. It is yummy, right? Um, so the question is... Well, actually, I should demonstrate how easy it is to take out the grounds, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, and this, this could be a failure point. We don't know. Uh, but now at this point, all I need to do is pull back up slowly. And it kind of gets jammed up. All right. Boom. Right. So now this has uh, some muckiness to it, but just take that to the sink and, and, and rinse it out. And then, you know, the really cool thing is uh, I'm going to make a little bit of a mess here. All these grounds are captured right here in this disc here. So, yeah. you know, you can go compost now uh, your, your grounds and that'd be fine. You can throw them away if that's if that's what your jam is. Uh, no judgment here. But um, that's how easy this is. That's how easy it is to clean up and how fast it is. So, but the question I always have and the one I ask of uh, Michelle on a regular basis these days, is this something that we keep? Is this something we give away? Uh, or is this a worthless piece of junk and we should crush it? <laughs> well, I'm going to actually split my answer. Okay. I'm going to say that we should keep it. Okay. But mm -hmm. that we should also get another one for your dad because oh. he's a big cold brew nut. Oh, that's right. And uh, that's right. I think Jim Fish would appreciate the, uh, the ability to have cold brew within an hour. Within an hour. Okay. I, I forgot that he likes cold brew. That's, yeah. Man, you're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, I think we got to get out of here. And so what we like to say on that is... When you love the world... The world will love you right back. Hey, thanks for joining us. For future episodes, click the subscribe button. Bean Basics is brought to you by OneBigIslandInSpace.com with two Gs.